Hello and welcome. I'm going to be starting up another Blender series here. This one's kind of aimed at rookies or novices. It's uh, not necessarily for an absolute beginner. I have another series for that you should check out if you're if you're an absolute beginner. This one's more to add a, a few new tools to your arsenal if you're just getting up and running with Blender. Kind of introduce you to various things that aren't as intuitive or aren't as used at, aren't used as often. So let's jump into it. Today I'm going to be talking about curves and I'm going to be talking about text because text is treated very similarly to curves. So I have here a default setup. I have activated my screencast keys for your viewing pleasure. And I'm going to delete the lamp because it always bugs me. I'm going to change to the cycles render engine up on the top, even though we probably won't be using any of the, the render and any rendering today. Um, and I'm just going to delete that default queue. But before I delete it, let me just review really quickly what a mesh is. A mesh has faces, edges, and vertices. Very simple. When you go to add, uh, I'm gonna ship, I'm gonna snap my cursor to the center, and I'm gonna add a mesh. If well, I'm not gonna add a mesh. I'm gonna look at the add menu under meshes. We're familiar with with, with what meshes are. They have faces. Those faces are then rendered in the render engine. Well, what about all this other stuff? We have curves and surfaces and meta balls and text. Today, I'm gonna be talking about curves and I'm gonna be talking about text, go over what those are. Now, a surface is very similar to a curve. It, it just has a, an extra uh, set of faces to it. Curves are literally lines and surfaces are, are two dimensional curves, if you will. So the curve, let's go ahead and just add a Bezier curve and look at it. And all of these are, are very similar in the fact that they are paths, they are mathematical al algorithms. And I'll jump into what that means in just a second. So curve, Bezier curve, added it. It's a flat uh, curve, so I'm gonna switch to the NumPad 7 view just to be able to see it straight on. And you'll notice it's a cool looking curve. Pretty nice, be fairly difficult to model that accurately without uh, without the curve. So that's, that's cool, it's a nice shape. If you go into edit mode though, this is where it really gets crazy. If you've never seen a curve before and you look at one in edit mode, it, it may cause you con some concern. It's different. You don't see any faces or, or edges. It has these arrows on it. You have these these three dots on, on each end. Um, let's let's look at this really quick. And I'm just going to hide the, uh, the arrows there just so we can get a better look at it. On each end of this curve, we have two pink rods. If it's not selected, uh, so yeah, it's still pink. In those rods, we have three points. We have a middle one on each end, and then we have a top and a bottom on each end. Okay. Now from those six points, the mathematical algorithm for a Bezier curve can determine all of the points on the curve, no matter how many you need. That's really useful, not only for the special shape it has, but also because you can change the resolution to whatever you want because it can calculate it at any point along the curve based on these six points. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to, before I even adjust any of these points and show you what they do, if I were to go back to object mode and zoom in, you could probably count the points based on where the little corners are on this curve. But, that's only because it's set to a low resolution. If you have the curve selected and you come over to the options on the right hand side and find the one that has a little curve uh, symbol, then you come down and you'll see under resolution, it has a preview resolution and a render resolution. Now it's set to 12 and coincidentally, there are 12 points, not coincidentally. There are 12 points on this curve. You can amp that up to however high you want. I think. 64 might be the max here. Um, and you'll notice it's very nice and smooth now. You could also put it way down and say maybe five and it's very ragged and jagged. So that's a nice thing about the curve is since it's already defined mathematically, you can change however many points you want to however many points you need. And we're gonna keep it nice and high for 64 points for our nice smooth curve. 
and we go back into edit mode and notice nothing's changed. We still have three points on each side. Now the middle point on each side represents the end point of the curve itself. Pretty simple. Move it around, that's where the curve terminates. Again, that's where the curve terminates and it, it will change the shape a little bit based on how those end points line up. Let me get into the other ones though. You'll notice that if I change the rotation of one of the end, uh, top or bottom on each end, it will rotate the other along that fixed endpoint. Okay, so the rotation is uh, how do I say that? It's not unique to each of these points, but it's shared. The rotation is the same for each of the endpoints. Because if I rotate this, it'll rotate the other one up. Rotate this down, I rotate the other one up. What is unique is the length. I can change the length of this to pull the curve out, or I can change, if, if and that's for the side that the curve is on. So see how it curves up to this side? If I change this length, it doesn't really change anything at all. In that way, it's unique to each side. And again, down here, you'll see the curve is more on this side. So if I change the length of this one, it'll pull that curve out. Whereas if I change the length of this one, not much happens. Actually, nothing happens, except for the small rotation that I'm making by trying to move it. So that's how the curve works. And obviously, you have to play around with it to get the shape you want. But again, just those six points, three on each side, will determine the entire curve. And it's a similar similar concept for any of the other curves. Let's look at one um, one of the other ones as well. Let's pull up a, a NURBS NERB circle. NURBS is uh, an acronym that is referring to the algorithm that's used. Again, so it's a circle. We go into edit mode, and we have a perfect circle. Awesome. We also have this box you'll see that has the points that define that circle. So as we move these points, it has different behavior, but those points will define every single path along that circle depending on what our resolution is. So it's, it's very adjustable. If you need to do a complex curve like that, curves are where to start rather than meshes. Going back to the Bezier curve though, I wanna talk about a few other options that we can see on this right-hand pane under the uh, curves tab. And these are options that will allow you to make this line into a shape that can be rendered. So the first one I want to look at is this fill. This pull down menu fill has the full back front and half and that's how the curve is filled. So if we then have half which is the default and come down to the bevel depth and crank that up you'll notice it gets filled in this manner. If we then change fill to front, it's just the one side, back is the other side, and full makes it a square tube. Now if you set the resolution higher, you can make that into a round tube. Again, resolution would be under the bevel resolution. So now our curve has become a noodle or a nice smooth pipe. Now let's say we didn't want a pipe, we can just turn our depth back down to zero. And then we can change another way under modification, we can go to extrude and pull this up. And what this does is just extrude it along the z-axis to make a ribbon. So you'll see we have a ribbon. If we then change our depth, we can make an elongated pipe. So there's a lot of things you can play with here to do different and cool shapes. Now keep in mind, if we go back to edit mode now, we're still looking at just three points on each side that define the curve. 
if for some reason then you wanted to take this shape that you made and you wanted to edit it further as a mesh, you just convert it to a mesh. And the way you convert a curve to a mesh is going into object mode. You have to be in object mode. You hold down Alt, you press C, as in cat, and it brings up this context menu. Make sure your cursor is in the 3D view window. And you can convert to a mesh from a curve. Note here that you can also convert to a mesh from text. And we'll get into that in just a second. But let's go ahead and convert to mesh. This is something that you can undo either by going to, uh, where is it, object, undo, or pressing that shortcut that it says there, control Z. So this can be undone. You can go back to a curve. It's, it's not irreversible. But since we converted it to a mesh, let's go ahead and hit tab go into edit mode and look at that nice pretty mesh that we have that we can then work with to do whatever we need but it's a great starting point okay a lot of people will use curves for things like trees that have really natural curves to them that are hard to mimic or that take too much time it's really a time saver I would say overall uh, but it, it does look nice so that's curves for you uh, this is a gist of curves, this introduction. Go ahead and feel free to try out the other types of curves that you can mess with. We looked at the Bezier curve and we looked really briefly at the NURB circle. But as you add one of these, pay attention to the points that you are allowed to edit and how they affect the shape. Also, services work very similarly. They will probably have more points since they have a greater or a more complex shape, we should say. We're going to then skip now, and we're going to delete this uh, curve that we made. We're going to add, let me snap my cursor to center again. We're going to add text this time. We add text and we get literally text. Well, this is actually editable. You don't just get the word text every time you click add text. That would be quite the, the troll move by the developers, but no, we, get to, we can edit this text if you go into edit mode. So right now we're in object mode. You can see we have a special type of object with this F. This F symbol is the symbol for text. So if we hit tab, go into edit mode, you'll see we have a text editing cursor. Well, what we can we do? We can do backspace and we can type out, I love 3D modeling. Great, perfect. So then we tab back and we have this nice text. Well, what can we do with this text then? We can scale it with S just like you could. Um, though you can only do that in object mode because in edit mode you have the, the 3D cursor. In edit mode you can't do much. Uh, there's no points to click, there's, there's not much to do and any of the hotkeys that you hit will type in that text. So make sure you tab. Oh, also before I jump out of there. You can also hit uh, enter or return and start a new line if you need to. So it's it's literally a text editor and it just puts all the text in there. This text is treated as a path. So very similarly to the, the Bezier curve we got to play with or the other path or other curves. It's treated as, as a curve object or very similar to one in that it can scale. You'll see actually on the right hand side under this F for the text object in the options it has a resolution that's editable as well so if we wanted to scroll in really really close here on this D you can see it's not perfectly smooth so let's up the resolution up it to 50 there we go perfect now that way it's perfectly smooth if we wanted to be really really close in and want it to still look nice okay if you're zoomed way out, you don't necessarily need a high resolution because it, it's you can't really tell. But if you're zoomed in, it's really useful to be able to change that. Okay, so you can convert text just like just like uh, curves. You can convert text to a mesh with Alt C. I'm not going to do that right now, but uh, very easy. Uh, one of the cool options you can play with are you can change the oh. There we go. You have bevel and, and extrude as well on this. So if you go to bevel depth and crank it up to, it bevels a little bit differently, but it kind of inflates it. 
you can see the, the unique shape it gives it here. Um, and you can change the resolution of that to make it nice and round by cranking up the resolution. You can change the extrude size under the extrude slider here. Remember, you can also just click on these and type in a number if you know exactly what you want. Um, and then you can change the fill type as well. If you only want to do, let's crank the extrude down to see what this does. If you only do one sided, if you want it to lay flat on a surface, for example, you can just do front or you can just do back. Um, if you're working, if you're trying to minimize your number of faces, for example, that's one thing that would be really easy to, to, to change there. So I'm going to do both just to make it look cool. Uh, crank up that resolution so it has really smooth edges. And we're going to extrude it a bit to make it look tall. So really nice, good looking text there. Then once you're done with that, you can, uh, let's see. Yeah, so let's do one real quick thing here. Let's add, oh, oh, okay. Before I jump into the next option, I'm just looking down through the options here. Under the font option, you can change the font type, but you have to load it in via file. And I haven't played with this too much, so I'm not really super familiar on this. Uh, but you do have to add in the font type from file to be able to set a different font. Now, you can do this text on curve, which is actually really cool. Let me just change the text really quick to make it simple. I'm going to do just one line. I love 3D modeling. I'm going to add a curve in. I'm just going to add a circle. And I'm going to scale that circle. Make it nice and big. Okay. Now, if I highlight this text and I go to text on curve option again this is on the right hand side under the F for text and I click text on curve I can now see that circle added Bezier circle click on that and it makes the text follow the shape and I haven't quite figured this out I'm sorry to, to give you an incomplete tutorial here I haven't figured out why sometimes it'll offset this but it, it will follow the shape regardless it may just be a little bit off to the side and you can always just grab it and move it to where you want, but uh, it'll follow the shape of that circle. Again, if you want to rotate it along the Z axis, you could do that as well. You could even do this for an animation, um, which we'll get into probably in a couple videos here, but that's a really cool option. The point of this is to show off the text on curve. You can do this with any of the curve types and any of the contorted twisted curves that you could come up with so check that out and i think that's it for today um, once these are converted to meshes you can add all of the the crazy textures and and uh, materials to them that you need and uh, render them accordingly so we'll get into some other tools for your tool set, but today I hope you learned a bit about curves and, and fonts and some of the cool objects or some of the cool options that you can do. I'll see you guys probably in a week with a new, new video. Thanks.